Um, so let's start. So let me start. So um, my name is Gad Alon. I'm the faculty director of the MNT program. Um, and today, what I'll do is I'll divide what I'm doing to, to three parts. The first part is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the program. So who we are, what's our vision, um, how does the class look like, what activities, new classes that we're offering, things like that. Then I'm going to devote probably 10 minutes to the admission side. So basically question of what are the, what's the process? We already passed ED, so may, you may not be interested in uh, thinking about ED, but just talking about the process. Um, and then I'm going to, and then also what are we lo looking for? So if you're thinking about RD, what are we looking for? Uh, and then questions and answers, Q&A. But the reality is that you should ask, you should not wait to Q&A at the end. You should ask whatever question whenever you want to ask it. And I, the best way to do it is to type question into the chat. And what I'll do is I'll stop once in a while, I'll fetch question from the chat. The only rules are the following. Don't ask yet about admission because I'm going to talk about admission. So any question that you have about admission, wait until sort of when I talk about that. If you want to ask a question, it's best to ask a question in a way that everybody can see your question so people don't repeat the same question. But if you have a question, and then I, I will read your name and the question. If you have a question that you want to be personal, so you don't want other people to see, um, then type them anonymously and I will not read your name when I read the question. Okay? For whatever reason, if you don't want other people to know what question you're asking. What question don't ask me? Do not ask, please do not ask me questions on what's my likelihood of getting in. I don't know. Don't ask me a question of, here is a specific situation that I'm in, and, and you know, we can wait with that question until the end, and then if we have time, happy to try to answer these. And do not ask me a question about percentages, what is the likelihood, what percentage you do, just because I, I'm not allowed to say that, it's not that I don't want to, but Penn Admission doesn't allow us to share information on overall, how many people apply, what fraction of people accepted, all of these things I, I would have liked, but I can't. And so I'll try to be as honest as I can to what I can, and otherwise I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, it's really meant to be as helpful as possible, as interactive as possible, so really feel free to type whatever question you have. I have the chat in front of me, and if I can, I'll stop, and if not, I'll tell you when I'm going to get to this question. Is everybody with me until now? And so exactly. We have the last resort, of, of which is really using your, your a, a facial expression a, as a way to... A, to say something, to, to basically to demonstrate that you're here. Okay, very good, so let's start. So you see my slide, the first slide here, and um, let me talk, by, by the way, I see that some of you did not turn your video, you also didn't say yes, that you opened everything. It's not like an admission day where you need, we look at a, 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 a demonstrated interest and then you say, did you show up to any of the activities? We don't really care for demonstrated interest, to be honest. And so like, if you say, well, I like, came here, at least I was on the list, it doesn't really help anyone to be absolutely uh, I don't know whether that's the right for you. So let me start actually with the vision of the program. And the main vision, and that's probably the slide, the most important slide for today. This is the slide I start every board meeting, every meeting with the students, every alumni activity. And basically we, what we say here is that Jerome Fisher program aims to educate future leaders capable of tackling big problems, big societal problems by designing, building, and leading technology-driven product and ventures. Literally every word here was chosen carefully. And what I mean by that is what the program is really designed to try to develop leaders in, in, in a world that is very much driven by technology but people out there are interested in solving problems and realize that to solve problems at scale, it's not enough to be a one that can build products because very quickly you realize that the main constraint, if you're very good in building product, is the inability to build an organization around it. And if you're really good in building organizations and you're interested in taking people and, and running with them, you realize that the fact that you don't really know how to build yourself is going to become, in today's world, a constraint. Well, one of my favorite books from 2019, people remember 2019? It was like, you know, like 10 years ago. And so 2019, um, 
One of the best books was a book called Range by David Epstein. Anyone read? Yes? No? No? Um, let me... Yeah, let me actually read it. That's the book. Um, highly recommend. Um, and it starts by, by, by the way, if you're wondering if that's a real library or not, that it's not. A, it, it's, a, it's a real. A, a, it's not break one. But anyway, this book it starts with a with a comparison of Tiger Woods and Roger Federer. Um, and if you look at Tiger Woods, everybody knows Tiger Woods, Roger, Roger Federer. If you're, even if you're not a tennis fan, a golf fan, you probably heard his names. And Tiger Woods, from day one, his father destined him to be an amazing golfer. And, you know, there is a photo of him putting when he was, like, eight months old. Uh, and they started a whole cottage industry of people dedicating themselves to one thing. But the book actually said, well, if you look at Tiger, at uh, Roger Federer, Roger Federer was, uh, even though his mother was a tennis coach, she actually never coached him tennis. And he was a soccer player, a skier, a, a musician. He did many, many things until he became a, until he settled on tennis. And the point the book makes is that if you look at actually most innovators, they, they actually don't look like Tiger Woods. They, in fact, look much more like Roger Federer. In fact, they are delaying the choice of specialization later on to the, in their life. And the point here is that if you are in a world that looks like the Augusta tournament that we have this weekend, then sure, be where everything is set and everything is static, then sure, go and be one thing and do it really well. But if you, the world is what he calls a wicked world, where things are changing continuously around you, then actually learning both about people and engineering is probably a better choice than just building one. And so that's really, in a nutshell, what M&T is about. It's about developing both sides of the brain, developing both the idea of how to deal with people, organizations, teams, but also being very analytical, diving deep into complex problems, using a very much an, sort of like an engineering way of thinking. So this is really what we're trying to build. But that's, a, okay, that's an idea. What we do with that, we, are, we put it into a curriculum and we say, well, we want to be able to design build and lead. And when we say design, it's about design thinking, creative thinking, so the ability to take a, an amorphous idea and translate that into a specification, need, personas, stories. They'll build both a product and organization. And we all understand what it means to build a product, right? The notion of building a very early a MVP, proof of concept, whatever you want to call that. But we argue also that the decisions that you make early with respect to your organizations have a much longer staying power than what most of us are willing to admit. Your core team, the culture, the decisions that you're making early are going, to have are going to really dictate your likelihood of succeeding more than we think. We want you to think about these things early. And then lead, which is, of course, the ability to lead at scale. How do I build an organization that actually can take what I, my idea and scale it? So now we say, okay, that's okay. Let me take it one step further, and we say that's and that's probably the most important slide for today. What is the M and T skill set? This is actually what we want you to have when you graduate. So some people say, do I need to be a good developer, programmer? But when I should I program since I was in second grade? No, it's okay to come with actually no experience in coding whatsoever, or no experience in any technology, because we want you to have a deep understanding of technology, but we can teach you. When I say we can, that's the goal of engineering school, is to teach you to be to understand technology really well. And many people are majoring in areas that they've never seen before they came here. We want people that have deep understanding of organizations, businesses, and their environment. And what I mean by that is, if you I try to make not too many COVID references, but you know, we cannot make none. And so one of the, I'm not sure you've seen, there are a different rumor, different, so we already have a vaccine. We might not have most of the world vaccinated. Even the US will not be vaccinated and 
until let's say next year. When I say next year, I mean 2022. And the reason for that is that it requires really many different stakeholders to play together. You have firms that need to invest in capacity. You need to be able to mobilize that. So you need a supply chain and logistics. This specific drug need to be at a specific scene, need to be in a very low temperature, which means you cannot really deliver it anywhere. You need governments to coordinate and to say, you know what, if you're at risk, you actually should take a priority here. So if you have a solution that might be technologically better than someone else, but they understand the stakeholders better than you, they will win 10 out of 10 times. Make and understand state the main hurdle for success more than the technology many times. Then we want people to be data fluent. You probably have your favorite proverb where data is the new oil, oil is the new data, whatever it is. And the point here is that we're going to have more data than ever. We want people that are fluent. Now, again, we don't expect you to be an expert or to even know what machine learning means. But if you live here without knowing machine learning, that's our failure. If you live here without the ability to harvest data, visualize data, process data, warehouse data, then we did something wrong. So we want you to be fluent, just like another language. Leadership, we want people to have both a sense of direction and a sense of action. Sense of direction is the idea of having a moral compass. We want you to, have, to be passionate for something. But also we want you to have a very strong sense of action. And when, what I mean by that, it's really, you know, never been in a time where the distance between an idea to execution has been so short as now. Right? If you have an idea now, by the, by the time we finish this, if you leave, by the time this webinar ends, you might have it already built and with customers, users. No code, no money, nothing. Just you have it available. We will, oh, so don't leave. I mean, but, 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 if, but the point here is that we want people that err toward action. The world is, let's say, in, in a very simplistic way, let's say that the world divides between those who are proud or they are, and those who are proud of what they've done or what do, we prefer those who are proud of what they do rather than who they are. So I'm saying that to combat the is we're getting it. So I would try to screen for them in admission, and in particular, being entrepreneurial. And what I mean by that, I mean, you don't need to be the MNT generates many entrepreneurs, but it's not an entrepreneurship program per se. But we want, and when I speak with our alums, all of them are very entrepreneurial. And when I say entrepreneurial, you can be an investor, you can be an engineer, you can be a manager, you can be, you can, you can do many, many different things. Entrepreneurial means that you are never content with the status quo. That whatever you are, you say, well, I see the world around me and I don't like it. Here, let me change something. If you are of this type, then this is a perfect program for you. And I'll talk about it more later on. But exactly, this is the kind of thing that I don't really know how to teach you. I'll, I'll just be very honest. I, I, so we try to screen for that in admission. By the way, I'll repeat what I said earlier. Any question you can type into the chat box, happy to answer whatever question you have. Okay, so. But until now, there shouldn't really be any question. But if there is one, happy to answer. So a little bit of snapshot of the program. So um, the program is a coordinated dual degree. And I'll talk about what coordinated mean. You can get whatever degree the engineering school offers and whatever degree Wharton offers. But Wharton offers only one degree, which is Bachelor in Science in Economics. Engineering offers many majors. So I'll say from the beginning, you can do whatever major you want in engineering and whatever concentration you want from Wharton. I'm going to show you the distribution in just a minute. Okay. Um, again, engineering, you can do multiple degrees. There is a BSE, which is of like a real engineer, 
bachelor in science and a, a, a by bachelor in, in science in, in science or a BAS, which is applied science, science and engineering or applied science. BAS is not offered in every major. It's offered only in computer science and BE to a large extent. Um, I'll answer the question in a second, John. Um, the program is selective, but we do admit people, as you know. Uh, we admit 50 to 55 people a year, 25% international, and we don't. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't have quotas. One thing I should say from the beginning, so we are trying to target 25%. We just, over time, that's what happens, and we're not changing that this year. If your question is, are we going to admit fewer people or more people because of the fact that a few people took a gap year, the answer is no. We plan to, to get the same number of people. So your chances, chances are exactly like every year. I'll talk about diversity in a second, but before I say a question, would you say MNT grads are more engineering or business focused? Very good question, John. You will have to wait a few more minutes to answer this question uh, because the answer is neither, but you have to wait to hear a more elaborate answer in a few minutes. Okay. So I'll get into all of these pieces in a second, um, but I'll say the following. First of all, the program is we try to go and be more diverse over the years and one dimension that we actually quite successful, I joined here. So these are the classes that I admitted is that we have around 40% women. In fact, that's the, the new freshman class, I call them new freshman class is also 40%. So again, we're not targeting a certain number, but overall we are a, trying to make sure that we are representing also where we think the world is going. By the way, if you look at the numbers, this is upon admission, but also the, the fraction at graduation. We have very small drop off throughout this day, the program, primarily because we are very careful to make sure that the people we admit are the people that are going to graduate. Um, engineering majors. So let me make the following statement. Your engineering major is a major decision. No pun intended. And, and, and what I mean by that is your, if you chose computer science, it's going to be vastly different than bioengineering and vastly different than system, and vastly different than material. Each and every major has a different sequence of courses. So you'll see here computer science is around 63%, but all the rest actually fairly consistent. So we have every year five to eight system. We have every year five to eight mechanical, every year five to eight WE, five bio, two material. Around 30% of the people change their major at the end of year one. So almost it doesn't matter what you write. We know that when you come here, you'll be exposed to new majors and you will change. 30% change. Because you might not be exposed to some of these before you came here. Okay, that's the engineering. And while the engineering major is a major decision, let me ask you a question. How many majors does Wharton have? Type it into the chat box. How many majors does Wharton have? Exactly, one. We have only one major in economics, but there is something called concentration. Concentration is really a minor decision. You need to commit to your concentration. Some people commit to concentration only in, so in senior year. It's essentially four courses. If some of you is very quick to do the numbers, you'll see that actually these are more than 100%. Why? Because a person can do more than one concentration. And the reason finance is the biggest is really because many people, even if they're not going to do a single thing in finance, many of them say, if I already came to Wharton, known for its finance department, then I've done already a course with Jeremy Siegel that appears on CNBC, and I've done something on derivatives, that I need two more courses and I have a concentration. So don't let this kind of dictate so much. Here, most people don't even know what they want to do until pretty much the end. And also there is a way of doing individual concentrations which many people do, Wharton is actually fairly flexible with that. If you want to do like two courses from here and two courses from here, and if there is a reason. Um, what do our alums do? So that's actually um, looking at multiple years without actually I'll add 2020 in a second. It's a little misleading, but you'll see that actually this is 38%. And in fact, if you look at the tech overall, it's around 42%. Um, so overall, we have more people going to tech, but I would say it's actually fairly balanced and, and between these two. When we talk about tech, most of the people are going, so actually this is, if I'll add just the people I just graduated, they had six here, we had eight here, and we had six here, entrepreneurship. And, and so overall, 
what you see is many people are going to product management. Product management is of like these coveted jobs where you are truly implying your M and D. You're in one. You're on the one hand, you need to be able to speak with the engineers and take your understanding into what does that mean for product architecture, but also you need to be able to speak with the marketing people and the product people uh, to translate that into what does that mean to how we push the product, what information do we want, what signal do we want. So you see more and more people do that. Um, by the way, again, any questions, feel free to type. MNT curriculum. So the MNT curriculum really has three components. It has your, I didn't, what, I didn't say what CIS is. CIS is the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. That's the name of our uh, engineering school. Um, and then Wharton is not, of course, a, a, an acronym, but you know what Wharton is. I'm not going to talk about these. These actually is, depend on your major and concentration. If you want to read more about these, you should probably go to their respective websites. Um, and you'll see that there is actually, Wharton has, generally speaking, less flexibility on the courses, a lot of flexibility on the sequence. Engineering, depending on the major, have more or less flexibility. I want to talk about the MNT specific courses. So I want to devote some time to that. Um, so actually, right, uh, uh, there is a question here that in, the, in the message that I'm going to answer exactly in a second. Um, so the question was, are non-MNT students allowed to take MNT courses? Um, so, our, so the answer is, generally speaking, no. So here are four courses that are only for MNTs. No, actually not all of them, but the freshman seminar open only to MNT. Management 237, the immersive week, only MNT. 237 is the one teaching that I allow for a small fraction of non-MNTs, and the integration lab is only MNTs. So these are courses that are offered only to MNT students. Um, and some of them, one, two, and three are taught as part of your cohort. So the entire MNT class is going to take it together. Okay, so let's talk about that. So freshman seminar, this is the first thing people do when they come to campus. It's actually offered every Tuesday, 6 to 8 p.m., so it doesn't clash with any other course. And the goal is really, we have multiple goals. One, social cohesion. Second one, the ability for people to ask themselves, so we invite people from this different majors, what does this bring you to an eye so to try to build your network? So let me actually talk a little bit about, show you. We have more, Pete Fader talked about marketing and, and quantitative marketing. He just sold a firm to Nike, a firm that the, fir the name of the firm was Zodiac because they are trying to find whales, which is of like, you know, these big customers using data. Uh, so he's coming and talking about that. In fact, he started the firm together with a PhD student of him, and this PhD student of him was an MNT student that worked with him since he was an undergrad. So Pete Fader is known for a grooming many MNTs to be faculty later on and to work with him on topics. So, and, and, and he's a very, very quantitative a researcher. Then Ethan Mollick about crowdsourcing, Michael a, a Roberts about finance. A, on the engineering side, we have, again, different domains. So you can see what people do. So Vijay Kumar, the dean of the engineering school, talks about um, swarms and and and, and, uh, and all of his uh, drones. Uh, Michael Kearns was yesterday, not yesterday, today's Thursday. So two days ago, he was there talking about ethical AI. Why actually doing ethical AI is actually pretty hard. Um, then I mean Shu Yang talking about materials and, and how do you do materials for a uh, for, for masks. Now, the point here is that we ask these faculty not to teach. We say, give the students your most advanced research talk. And the idea here is to make sure that you can see what research is done on campus. And if you want to do research, like Vijay Kumar again, he said, like someone asked me, can I do research with you? He said, of course, show up on Friday, 1 p.m. to my lab. And if you are there and you are interested, you'll start doing research. So every year we have many students that start their research collaboration in that seminar. And then we bring our alums. So we have Charu, that is the a, a product manager at LinkedIn, and, and data scientists and co-founders in different areas and different firms, and, and, they, and people doing investment banking and hedge funds. And really the goal here is to help you build your network already from day one, but also to try to understand what does that actually mean to be something. So, you know, I hear from many people, I want to be a product manager. Maybe once you hear, and it's asking these people usually, do you know what product managers do? I said, no, but I heard it's great. So maybe once you hear what it is, 
you will say, I don't want to spend a day of my life doing that. I, I prefer dying than doing that. But, and then so you, you hear a lot of this herd mentality of people just hearing what other people, the goal of bringing these uh, alumni is for you to just start to demystify what you do. And many of these alum people ask them, okay, how do I make sure that I make the right decision? And most of them will say, you never know. Most of us, we made so many wrong decisions. You see from the outside only the right decision. So I love that. I mean, most, most, I'll give an example. Michael Kearns on Tuesday is not an alum, but he's one of our speakers. He stayed until 9 p.m. The class ended at 8. He stayed one more hour just to answer a question of students. So people are really, really committed uh, to this class. I did mention we have a new word on a, a dean. And she came, she's the first female dean for Wharton in, in the many, many years of Wharton uh, is, is a school. And she came and spoke about crisis management. And so one of the students asked her, that's management. So that's great all of your research, but can you show me what you do to manage this crisis? And they went and got into how she built her entire team around based on... Um, so very, very interesting conversations. That's freshman year. Integration lab, that's what happened at the end. And in freshman year, we want you to present with you only with your M&T group. Integration lab, in fact, we do invite you to bring people that are not part of M&T. So one thing we don't try to be is try to make... We, we want you to build networks that go way beyond M&T. So in fact, if you created a team and many people, half the teams are M&T only, half the teams are M one M&T or two M&Ts because you might meet really nice people in other places and that's great. And so the integration lab is basically saying, let's take everything you did in freshman year in, in Wharton and everything you did in engineering, and now let's take a big problem and try to solve it. So, and then you're present in the M&T summit. M&T summit, I showed you the 2019 bit because we had to cancel Last year, the M&T summit, the day before the summit itself, because of the other day, the week before, because of the proximity to, because no one wanted to fly anymore. But we had 200 alums and 150 students ready to, to come to that. Just to show you from, just show a few pictures actually from the night, the day before, the year before. So, uh, Jeff Lohr, the founder of StubHub M&T, talked with VJ on starting a firm and then being, what has he done since? Uh, we had alums fly from all over the world. So Peggy from Hong Kong and Reshma that runs the biggest accelerator in Europe flew to talk about what does that mean to scale in other countries. Um, we had a networking session where the students actually stood around and the, and the alumni rotated. I want to show you some of the projects the students submitted and so like as their main projects, the integration lab. So the team that won the integration lab, so it's aerated, the humification, Evaporative cooling air conditioner. They won the MNT summit, and that's actually this team. They won the MNT summit, and they won the campus-wide competition afterwards. You know, with M with faculty, with stuff like MBA and PhDs, and everybody submitting. You get usually a, a prize around hundred thousand dollars for winning that. So that's this team. A, the team Kirigami creating sustainable building envelopes. They won second prize here and won the engineering-wide competition. And SS Mapper, a smart autonomous surface vehicle, got honorable mention here and won the Cornell Cup. Now, I'm saying that not so much to brag, well, a little bit maybe, but, but really to show primarily that these are really, they're not solving small problems. I mean, look at this problem that they're solving. I mean, there's nothing wrong in one more app, but that's not what they're doing. They're really using deep technology to solve really, really problems. And so that's sort of like what we strive to some extent. Um, then we have a new initiative. We started that two years ago. Last year we had to cancel that, but that's called an immersive week. We take the entire sophomore class, fully funded by us, to another location and expose them to topics around the area. So, but there's a curricular element, professional element, community building element. I, I don't want to get too much into the details, but I'll show you how, like the year before that was in San Francisco. It was supposed to be globally this year, most likely not. Oh, actually, it will be global, but uh, through Zoom. Um, one day entrepreneurship, one day product, one day data, and one day finance and fintech. Just to show you a little bit how it looked like. So again, we flew everybody to San Francisco. Here is Tech Line from Planet Perkins talking about a VC. Frog Design doing a workshop on design thinking. Michael Seibel, we have every year multiple people at YC, talks about the pros to get to YC. Roger McNamee, this is actually an interesting guy. This is the guy that when Mark Zuckerberg had the offer to sell 
a Facebook to Yahoo for $1 billion. He came to this guy so to ask him what to do. And he convinced him not to sell it. And he brought around a billion dollars from investors like Bono and a few other people. And, and ultimately was the lead investor in, in the firm. No, I mean, as a, now he wrote recently a book called Zakt. And you can see him on MSNBC, CNBC, CNN, claiming that Mark Zuckerberg is the biggest threat to Western democracy. This is the end of day one. Now I'm, I'm showing you that primarily because to show that what we are really trying to expose students is to a different perspective. There's no cheerleading. It's really trying to show both the positive and the negative. The next day he starts with a product simulation. This is one of our product managers, a alumni. We build a simulation with them. Every eight minutes is another month. You get signals, you need to decide what do you change, what do you want to, uh, to fix, and the things are moving fast, and then you need to present it. Product, so this is the CEO of Logitech, many of us are using their product now. Why is it so much harder to do hardware? This is the guy who runs a quality for the iWatch, for the Apple Watch, talking about the difficulty of running, of building something like that. A data hackathon the next day, visits to Fitbit. Actually, that's an interesting story. A Roger Love, anyone here watched the Oscars last year, Bradley Cooper, in his acceptance speech, thanked this guy three times for helping him learn how to sing. And you say, how is that related to anything? Now, there are only that many Bradley Coopers, but there are many CEOs. So this guy helped CEOs use their voice. One of our labs that is working with him flew in from LA to spend a few hours with our students, helping them use their voice better. So you, the fact that if like, how do you go up? How do you use fun punctuation? How do you make sure that you can see here working with Catherine on how do you project your voice? Just a, really just a, a nice change in the middle of the day. Next day, FinTech, and then students work throughout the semester on project with Google, with Amazon, sorry, with Uber Elevate. And then of course there was a, a social element here. And then I'll answer the next question here. A, we did a bonfire and a, a Discovery hunt on a on Golden Gate a Park. Before I get into extracurricular activities, a little bit answer a question. A, okay, someone had to. Okay, very good. Um, so I, I talked a little bit about the curriculum, but there are many many other activities. We have a we support every possible entrepreneurial activity that our students are are involved in. From we have an amazing building. Fortunately, I cannot show you this building this year, but this building allows to hold the students can actually run meetups. Uh, we have alumni that are coming and doing office hours from like Shark Tank and, 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 and like alumni in different areas. We are supporting financially our students that are working for small firms. So if you are working for a small firm, we'll cover your cost over the summer. If you have an idea, we'll support that as well and, and give you a non-equity grant to work on that idea over the summer. I mean, I think the point here is that we are trying as much as we can. These are our resources on top of what the university offers. People ask me, will I have time to do extracurricular activities? And so I'll say that we admit you in a way that we think you'll be able to do that. So we have MNTs in everything from dance a, a companies to pen to pen apps, which is the biggest a collegiate hackathon, to pen racing car, which is you no know, considered to be the best electric racing car in the world. A pen masala, I'm not sure if people are familiar with that. It's it's pen masala is, is a, a world-renowned boys a cappella. It's harder to get into Pen Masala than to MNT. More than that, Pen Masala requires you to practice something around four hours a day. I mean, they, they perform all over the world. They perform in London and Hong Kong, everywhere. If you can do Pen Masala, you can do any a varsity sport. What I mean by that, if pen, if people, if MNTs, we have MNTs in volleyball, we have MNTs in rowing, we have MNTs in every possible sport, in wrestling, in in every possible sport. But to me, at least, when people ask me, will I have time? If you can do pen, if MNTs can do pen masala, MNTs can do everything. And then, of course, semester abroad. We have many people doing semester abroad, usually junior, spring, and we're happy to talk about that. Okay, if you survive by now, let's talk about admission a little bit. Um, so admission. We have passed ED, but let me still mention ED as well. Um, so there are three points where you can get into MNT. First one is ED. And if you apply to MNT and ED, you need to say that you apply to MNT as your first choice. And then you need to specify what is your second choice in terms of RD, 
ED Engineering, ED Wharton, RD Engineering, RD Wharton. Okay, so, but I assume most of you are seniors. Anyone is, if anyone is a junior, anyone is a junior here? Oh, oh so we have juniors. Okay, so let me talk about ED. So let me talk a little bit. So generally speaking, um, I cannot say how many people are, are accepted in ED. Uh, of course, as I said earlier. But I'll say from the beginning that we try to be fair between ED and RD. And what I mean by that is the following. Let's say, first of all, I know I, I look a little bit around at a College Confidential and Reddit, and I see the rumors there that you need to get both into Wharton and engineering, and only then you consider to be at MNT. It's the opposite. We are the first committee that meets. We meet before everybody else. If we like you, we take you. And I say like, I mean like like fit wise, not not like like. And if not, then we look at what you we, only then you go into the committee that's the relevant committee, the Wharton committee or the engineering committee. To some extent, if the engineering committee knows that you apply to MNT, usually it means that they have now more information. And usually it's actually it's a very positive signal to the engineering committee. So there's actually no cost or no penalty for being denied at MNT and then moving to Wharton or to engineering committee. We don't look at what you say as your choice. Again, that's another rumor that I see. You should say engineering. We should say Wharton. Don't believe any of that. We look at you as we look at you. We don't really try to guess and, and strategize. Let's say you didn't get into ED, or at least you got information you didn't get into ED. That doesn't mean you're not really going to be admitted. Why? Because when we get to regular decision, again, if you apply regular decision, you need to say MNT and specify Wharton or engineering as your choice. What we do in ED is we take, let's say we want to admit 25 people. We create a list of 30 people, and we have a list of five people that we bring again during RD. What does that mean? We try to be as equitable as possible. So we try to say, if you were among the top 50 people, regardless of whether you applied ED or regular decision, you will be in. So we want to make sure that the marginal student that applied, that could have gotten in in ED or could have gotten in RD, regardless of where they applied, they would be better than the next person we don't admit. I hope it makes sense. But what we're trying to really make sure that when we look at the entire picture, regardless of when you applied, so what I see many people is overinterpret the percentages of early versus regular. Don't look at that because it almost like doesn't matter. It's each group is is a is sort of like biased in a different way. What if the only thing you need to do if you apply into early decision is you need to add two more MNT essays. One of them is why MNT and one is asking you about leadership experience. I'll say in general, we read all of your essays. So we will read your Wharton essay if you apply to Wharton. We'll read your engineering essay if you apply to engineering. We'll read your Y pen essay. So don't need to repeat in the Y, M, and T things that you already said. Many times we'll say actually your real Y, M, and T is in fact your, your main essay, your common core essay. However, I cannot guarantee that the engineering school in Wharton will read your Y, M, and T. So make sure that your YMNT is, or that your engineering admission is not relying on YMNT, let's say. Okay, so make sure that, because I, I just cannot, I don't know if they will read your, your YMNT. Um, the last thing I'll say is that you will also accept transfers, and transfers only from within Penn. We have people that usually move from engineering, people move from Wharton. Once in a while, we have also once a year, one person a year, we also have someone that moves from the college. Someone that did, let's say, math or bio and want to move into MNT. And that's also possible. I mean, they're moving to two schools, both engineering and Wharton. It's, it's, it's competitive, as competitive as, as getting in. Uh, but I think some people, before they come to, M to Penn, don't know and when they come to Penn. And then we'll have a, a, a sort of like a, a office hours around it once you're on campus. So don't, no need to talk about that at this stage. What are we looking for? So, you know, this year it's test optional. And to be honest, I don't think it's going to change for next year. I mean, but I don't know. And what does that mean? In the reality is that we really never really relied on your ACT and SATs. I mean, they're useful, but they're not all that useful. Why? Because we really look at a very small group of people that, that the grades there are not always all that informative. 
we could accept a whole class that's only 1600, but actually, ultimately, we have very few in the class of Asia that have 1600. Because we think there are many other things that actually a 1500 or something 4090 or 4070 is with much better credentials or much better, more interesting things is going to be better than someone that did 1600, but it's sort of like flat in other things. So I'll say the ACT and SAT were really all, all, never all that informative. And this time, where you had only very few opportunities of taking them, if at all, I would not worry about that at all, whatever your grade there is. However, and let me start by saying, first of all, this. You're, you're seen in your local context. And someone asked me, and a student asked me yesterday, if you can get someone that was a 10, um, would you prefer them over someone that is a, someone that, that through high school showed that they can actually start from five and get to 10, or do you prefer someone that starts from two and get to nine? Whatever that means. That was the still question they asked me. And I said, I, I, we are looking for slope. We are not looking for intercept. What I mean by that, we are looking at you at your local context. We know your high school. How do we know your high school? We know your high school. And if we don't know, we learn your high school. We spend a significant amount of time. We know your area. We know what research is available. We know what options are available. We really look at you as knowing what's there, and we want you to excel in your area. So in particular, we want to make sure that you took the highest science and math in your class. So people say, but someone in my class, my school did that. No, if that's not offered, that's okay. And what if we you didn't take? Then we want to know why. No, we don't have hard and fast rules on anything. But if you've not done that because you decide to take another route and let's say do more computer science than science, that's okay. Let us know. In the Common Core, Common App, there is a place to actually write that. Write it in the notes. Tell us what's going on. But that's kind of like, we want to make sure that you excel within your environment. Leadership, we want to see some leadership. But let me say the most important part is show, not tell. What I highly, highly recommend is doing the following. Because common app or coalition app, you can add only that many supplements. What I really recommend is creating a one pager, a resume. And in that resume, create links for the things you've done. If you have a GitHub, have the link to your GitHub. If you don't have a GitHub, don't start creating it now. If you are, if you build a project, make sure that a, maybe you do a YouTube with this project. We're not going to judge you by the quality of the production, but we want to learn who you are. We want to see really who you are. And believe, I'm not going to go and stalk you on YouTube, but I, I finished this admission session watching many, many YouTube. I, I'm not going to try to see what you've done, but I usually have pages and pages of apps of people develop. Pages of, I mean, I go and read your research. I, I try to know really, we try to really know you as much as we can. Again, we are not going to go in and go in, in a, a wild uh, to find that, but give us the information. If you create, since the common core, common app is not conducive for that, create a one pager, a resume with links to these things, that's probably the best way of doing that, if you ask me. And, and then you upload that, and that's, that's where it is. Not necessary, but definitely helpful. Any questions? Yeah, so can you, uh, uh, can you elaborate a bit on the summer? Yes, actually, let me get there exactly now. So how can you learn more about our program? So you came here, so that's great. That's sort of like the webinars. Uh, M&T exploration we have when we have a building, and then we actually allow you to do a tour. We don't have that, but you can actually come and meet with our, that's essentially meeting with our students. And we can connect with the students. Actually, if you go to our website and you can see about us, you can see a list of students with a different profile and you can see which one you want to speak with and we'll match you with them. Don't click one of them because then we'll choose whoever we want. Click the one you are interested in speaking with um, and then we'll match you. And they can tell you maybe, I don't think, I mean, they might tell you a very different perspective than I am from my, from my perspective. You can also meet with our staff, with our team. And really, whatever question you have, we're happy to answer. And then we have our summer program. The summer program is for a juniors going to senior year. It's an amazing program. And when I say it's an amazing program, we just finished one. It's basically three weeks, two faculty, one more in the management side, entrepreneurship, one more in the engineering side, and eight TAs, all of them are MNTs. So you really get to experience how MNT look like for like in a three-week kind of environment. Um, 
if you if you know what net promoter score net promoter score is where you ask people how likely they are to recommend to someone else from one to ten and you look at the people that said nine ten and you subtract the number of people that said one to seven basically net promoters from a net detractors mntsi our sign program got a net promoter score of 80. 80 that means that 90 people were in the 9 10 10 people were in the one to seven the best brands in the world don't have anything about 40. 80. I mean, I can tell you all day how amazing it is, but like this number shocked. I mean, I knew how great it is, but I was shocked when I saw the number. It's just a great way to learn about the program. Now, people ask me, if I get into this program, does that guarantee admission? No. Why? Because... No. But, but I mean, I think it's a great way to learn about, learn about the program, and, and it's a great way for us to learn about you. So it doesn't guarantee anything, but it's definitely helpful for us to know, and for you to know. Many of the people that go into MNT SI apply to MNT, which is a, but many of them apply to Wharton or engineering, and they say, well, I, I, I saw MNT for three weeks, and this is just not for me, which is much better to do it in three weeks than to do it four years, spend four years in that. So overall, really a, a, a great, great program, a, and, and, and very unique. Most summer programs are run by adjunct faculty. We have actually the people that are really the key faculty at engineering and Wharton. So really, I mean, I think, we, the amount of resources we put into that is, is, is really amazing. So that's one way to learn about the program. If you're a senior, probably a little bit too late, you can be a TA in that and, and experience that. But if you're a junior, that's a great way to come to learn. These are some of our, our students, alum. So uh, Simran, actually, Jason is about to graduate this year. Uh, Brian uh, <coughs> is at the hedge fund. And Simran just started a PhD uh, at Stanford at NWE. In computer science. She was admitted to Caltech, Stanford, MIT, uh, and, and decided uh, Stanford for a PhD. So really, really amazing. Uh, and you can see she did finance, but she's probably going to do no finance in her future. Uh, but he did finance and is going to do finance. Uh, and so this is just like some of that. If I'll, any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. Is there a place to upload a one pager on the Common App? Yes. So the Common App allows you to upload a document, it can be another recommendation or another a page a paper or whatever don't need to upload papers in general abstracts are enough or a link to the ssrn or whatever arch archive you have so really the only thing i'll say is that there is a so if there is a place to upload upload the resume and and, and so that's like the best place for that john does that answer your question um so louise just submit a document with links and stuff then or would it be us no, what I usually recommend is already created into a resume, which I think, you know, I, like the way the common app is asking things is very archaic, right? In here, this and that, how many hours did you spend on something? Like, I, I don't care how many hours you spend on something. I mean, that's an indication of nothing. So I, I think building your resume is just a much better way of doing that. And when you build a resume and you create also a link in that to that activity, I think that's overall a better way to learn about you when it comes to the things you're interested in. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Yes. So, are you? I, I checked earlier about uh, uh, MTSI, but there isn't much info about the application. Yes, we're working the application now. So, that's going to be very, very soon, just because we are trying to make a decision of how that's going to look like. And so, it should be very, very soon. If you email me in a few weeks, I'll, I'll tell you if it's, uh, if it's, if it's not available, I'll, I'll know what it is, but it should be available very, very soon. So, good point. Any other question? No questions. Okay, excellent. So let me summarize why MNT. Um, two of the most amazing schools you can find out there. Um, of course, biased, but I've been in many places. No other better business school than Wharton. Engineering, one of the best engineering schools. On top of that, we have one of the best colleges out there. When I say you'll have to take a few courses at the college, when I say have to, because you, you should take courses at the college. But if you want to take courses, you want to take courses from experts. So Emily Watson, a Wilson, the, the, the person that has the best translation of the Odyssey, she teaches about the Odyssey. I mean, can, can, I mean like, what, like, do you want to teach from someone that teaches her translation? You can have her teach you that. Um, if you want, we have one of the best linguistic department, one of the best computational social studies department. Um, and then so it, you, like, it's really, really an, an amazing, amazing college photography, music, many, many things. Um, 
So you have amazing resources everywhere. Then on top of that, you have the MNT. And MNT, we have a building in the middle of the campus, which is not only a building as a physical building, but, but really a, and then I'll go and answer a few questions there. It's, it's not only an amazing building, but it's also a great place for people to meet. And so we have like cloud, a loud spaces and quiet spaces and, and small spaces and really trying to make sure that people can, and when I live there, you know, do you see like equations and, 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 and written everywhere and people are, are, are brainstorming on different things and, and many of the startup people have started as, as MNTs. Um, we have the most amazing alumni group. Um, for many of our students and our alums, the first employer was an alum. The first investor was an alum. And it's really the most committed alumni out there in many, many key places. And then, of course, the MNT community. Among you, you'll have a group of 50 people that you're going to know from day one that will be with you. And even within that, we have the MNT team, which are five of us, five team members that are dedicated to every aspect of your experience. And so it's a very bespoke, hands-on experience, white glove experience, if you will where even before you come, we'll have someone working with you on your four-year program. And then when you're here, you'll have, you have your engineering advisor, you'll have your Wharton advisor, or you'll have an M&T advisor, really not trying to put you into any templates. And for the next two years, you'll have someone. And then you'll have someone dealing only with relationship between you and alumni and helping you find jobs and internships, and then someone with everything helping you launch activ activities on campus. So every aspect of your experience is going to be helped by someone. And I'm saying that because there will be many places, I mean, there are many great schools, don't get me wrong, many, many, many good choices. And I'm sure all of you are going to end up in great places. That's not the question. But what m and is unique is every place is going to guarantee that you're going to be, it's very selective and you're going to be among a very small group. But if you go to any other place, you're going to be one out of 500, one out of 800, one out of 1,000. Very few places you'll have the wealth of options that Penn has, but still be part of 50 people of a really, really, really dedicated small group. The mix of that is just imp impossible to replicate. Uh, and, and again, you might not be interested, but if that's kind of the thing that, that resonates with you, there's really no better option than MNT. It's not the best option for everybody, don't get me wrong. But if everything I said today resonates with you, I would say that is probably the best program out there. Let me answer a few questions and then a, a, I'll invite you to hopefully to, to meet in person. But I mean, but let's first of all answer. Does a typical student complete the program in four years? The answer is yes. Most of the students complete in four years. Those who do not usually um, can try in the fifth year to do also a master's degree. So do what you call a sub matting, where you fin you're finishing a, f a, a, you're doing one more year and getting a master's degree from one of the engineering areas. Uh, one more question. What are your thoughts on submitting? I uh, was submitting a supplement letter of recommendation. Actually, to be honest, we don't really give it a lot of... I mean, well, let's say like that. If you have something, it has to be something really, really strong. I'll give an example. We had someone from UCLA write a recommendation letter for someone and said, I liked her so much that I invited her for a second year to work in my lab. To me, at least, that's the best testament for someone how... In how useful they are and how impressive they are. Most of the recommendations are, I, this, this person stand, spent the summer with me and they asked me to write a recommendation. Here's a recommendation. They don't really see what I wrote. So, you know, they're good, but they're they good just like everybody else. And, and so most of the time, don't, we don't, like, your school recommendations are much, much more useful. So if you choose an outside recommendation, just make sure it's someone that's really, really unique and someone that knows other people that got into Penn or someone that, that can have a reference point. Someone just say how great they are, of course that you're great. Otherwise, why would they write a recommendation to you? But it's, it's just not enough usually to really cut it. Um, is there time for study abroad activities within the four years? Yes, so most people do it in spring of, of junior year. And if you know it in advance, you can plan for that. And if you don't know it, you can actually arrange for that. Uh, and so it's actually, I would say between five to eight students, some of them all the way to 11 are doing that, so absolutely. You can do that. Um, how much time would you say a typical MNT has time for extracurricular activities? I mean, a lot of that is really depends on you. And what I mean by that is, to some extent, it's going to be a place where it will be a little bit of a, a decision for you to what extent you want to work on your own startup. 
to what extent you want to be in many, many clubs, to what extent you want to work on research on campus, to what extent you want to do another concentration. I would say most people, most MNTs are members of like seven different clubs. Uh, and then so Ch Penn is a little bit like being in a like kid in a candy store. There's just so many different things. And we want you to experience them, in which case the reason we look at your extracurricular is not we are really interested whether you know how to play the piano or not since you're a third grader. That's, I mean, it's interesting, but not all that interesting. We want to know whether when you come to campus, you can still maintain the rigor of the studies while being exposed to all of these activities that you want to do. So we want you to do extracurricular activities. I would say at least a few a multiple hours a, a day doing that. Um, is there an amazing female equivalent of Pen Masala? Yes, uh, um, it's not exactly that, but there, for every male equivalent, there is a female equivalent. I'm not saying they are performing as much internationally, but there are definitely there are multiple, multiple uh, female equivalents to, to that. Uh, yes. Um, so if you email me, I can try to find a, a, like one of our MNTs that in one of them and, 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 met, and make sure that you can speak with them. Um, and the MNT student probably is an entrepreneur. Do they find time to work on their initiative while pursuing two degrees at the same time? The answer is yes. And so many of them, of course, that's actually usually will say that these students actually probably are doing a little bit of less club work and a little bit, probably they don't do two or three concentrations, but absolutely many MNTs uh, are, are working pursuing their, idea, their ideas. We have just students now that raised from Sequoia around $3 million. We have another one that raised $10 million from Fundus Fund and Sequoia. So we have many, many first students that have time to do exactly that. We are past uh, 6 p.m. here, um, and so I see the last question. Are application expected to have done some sort of science research at school? No. So that's actually important to say. We don't expect to do anything specific. We want to see what you're interested in, and it's much, much better to do. That will be my final word for today. It's much better to show that you're passionate for something and do it well than to check boxes. And we want to see that you're passionate for something. What this something is really is different for different people. It can be that you're really passionate on a, a being a ballerina, really passionate about um, doing research, really passionate about building your own business. There is really no one way. And in fact, each MNT is surprised how different they are from everybody else. So there's really no, there, there is no explicit expectation that you do anything. Because if there was an explicit expectation, then it's almost like, then what's the point of doing that? Then everybody does it. Uh, so you really, we want people to be quite different. Thanks everybody for joining us. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have that in person. So hopefully we can meet in person next year. But until then, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. How can you find my email? Google that. I'm sure you can find the email there. Uh, and shoot me an email or go to our website and fill any of the forms, speak with our students. We would like you to apply if you think this is the right program for you. And if it's not, that's also okay. And I'm sure we'll see each other somewhere in the future. So a great rest of the evening, night, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And, and good luck in your application process if you're applying to college this year. Thank you, everybody. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you.